In today's video, I'm going to be going after the biggest buck of my life. As of right now, my biggest buck is a 12-pointer that I killed back in 2017. But in this video, I'm going to be trying my hardest to kill one even bigger. My journey started early in September. I assembled my fleet of trail cameras, half KG trail cameras and half Tacticams. Next, I headed for the woods and just started scouting. I was looking for literally anything that might be related to deer, just so I can find spots where the deer are or where they might be come later in the year. I was looking for for rubs, scrapes, just well-worn trails, bedding areas, literally anything I could find that would give me an idea deer were in the area. As I'd find a good spot, I'd put up the trail cameras. I literally had trail cameras scattered everywhere, and after a couple weeks, it really started to pay off. We were getting a lot of pictures and a lot of video of random bucks here and there. Some were big, some were small. But as the weeks ticked on, we ended up getting a few that came back pretty regularly and regularly enough, in my opinion, to go ahead and give them names and start tracking them. The first buck that came up was Shad Rap. He is a monster and I don't know what happened to his left side, but it is going wild, okay? It's having like a pizza party inside the antler. Literally crazy things happening with this deer. This buck was located in an area I called Split Buck Peaks. For obvious reasons, there's a buck with a split on it. It's a pretty basic name but it's good enough. And then another buck showed up and his name was Gasoline. Yes, that's right, Gasoline from last year. You can see the transformation from last year to this year. You can tell it's the same deer just cause of the shape of the antlers. Really wide spaced out tines that are pretty thin, but go pretty tall. This was the same buck I shot at and missed last year. And if I can figure out a way to take him out this year, he will literally be the biggest buck of my life. Next up is Michael. Now Michael's kind of just like your basic buck and I don't actually think he'd be the biggest buck I've ever killed, but he has showed up quite a bit and he's not that hard to identify. He appears to be a moderate size eight pointer, but is actually just a six pointer because he doesn't have any brow tines. And then there's Lincoln. Lincoln is absolutely massive. Lincoln was also a deer that we saw last year. Here's last year. Here is Lincoln this year. His rack is shaped and colored the exact same. Just this year, it's so much bigger. And this is by far the biggest buck I've ever seen on trail camera. And then there's Sean, a giant seven pointer that's easy to identify because his right antler comes up to a perfect fork. Sean's been running the woods around my cameras quite often, and he is by far the buck that I've got the most pictures and videos of. But my favorite part about Sean, last year, I pointed my gun and aimed down sight at Sean, but at the end of the day, I said, I'ma let Sean go. And even last year, I'd kind of been happy to kill him, but for some reason, I just let him walk. But now that we've done all the surveillance and we've seen all the bucks in the area, it's time to actually get in the woods and try to get after one. For my first hunt, I hopped up in a big pine tree. Needless to say, guys, I didn't really see much at all. I mean, I seen some squirrels and then there was actually this one spike that walked through. Then I shifted my focus up to split buck peaks. This is the area where I saw shad wrap and where I saw gasoline, which I shot at last year. If I could choose, one of these two bucks would be the one I'd like to get. Uh, actually, no, I would like to shoot Lincoln. Lincoln is on the hit list number uno. But as for number two and three, it's probably shad Shadrap and gasoline. Shadrap's obviously bigger and weirder, but gasoline has history. I shot at gasoline last year, but man, the luck was not in my favor that day. So as I headed up to the peak to hunt those bucks, once again in the saddle, just climbed up in the tree and sat there and was hoping for the best. About an hour into my hunt, I, uh, I heard a motor and it was coming straight for me. I don't know. What do you think? Sitting the one right next to a stand. There's a stand right there. Yeah, I sit in that another day. I feel like the deer may be on down here though. And that's a little far for a bow. But that's what I thought. While those guys are riding on down the hill, I want to tell you guys about the rangefinder I've actually been using this season. It's a Tidewe HD 700E. It has a six times magnification lens, five different modes you can use, has an LED red and green display that has four different brightness settings. It's also super lightweight and it doesn't cost a fortune. The way that I'm in a saddle, I just have it on a little clip clip it right here, let it dangle, or I can bring it around and set it in the pouch, that way it's out of the way. Then whenever I need it, I can pull it out, range, 
put it back. If y'all are interested in picking one up yourself, go on down to the first link in the description, Tidewee.com, and use promo code KG20. That'll get you 20% off. After my neighbor finally skirted down the hill, I didn't figure there was going to be much of a problem, so I just sat there. I was, you know, hoping for the best. Maybe the deer didn't care. It didn't take long, and, well, the deer didn't actually care. It was a string of about seven or eight does, and, you know, a doe's a doe. I wasn't after a doe. I'm really after a buck, like I said, you know. It was really cool to watch the does because they got pretty close to me, but, like, they never actually knew I was there, which is pretty good because I spook a lot of deer. I'm, I'm, I'm not a professional. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not a professional. Long story short, the does go past and not a single buck walks out at all i hunt that stand like three more times and i just i just kind of back out because nothing's happening then the next day i get my baku bike in the mail a baku bike is like a normal bicycle except it's battery powered and you can press the gas whenever you want so it's basically like an electric dirt bike or you can pedal if you want to now this thing's super powerful but more importantly it's super quiet and it's scent free there's no gas fumes at all hey watch this i'm gonna go for a top speed and you're not ain't gonna be able to hear me. He gonna do a flyby. A couple days later, I was out exploring on the bike, and I actually discovered this new location that actually had a ton of deer signs. It had deer beds. It had a well-defined deer trail. It even had scrapes, which is really great for this time of year. So naturally, I put up some trail cameras, and by golly, if I didn't get pictures just like that. I had a picture of a random guy coon hunting, but I also had pictures of some bucks that showed up. From these videos, it looks like it's two eight-pointers. One's definitely bigger than others, but I knew that as the rut was coming, in, there's always a chance that a big buck could just come storming through that same area. And can you guess what happens next? A few days later, a big buck stick comes storming in. Knowing the big buck was in the area, I put together an attack plan, and the very next morning, I got on my bicycle, pitch black dark, and I started heading down to that location, hoping to put an arrow in this big old buck. <sighs> Guys, I really hate to say it, but I rode my bicycle about 20 yards before I wrecked it in the ditch. Oh! Ow! Guys, I didn't make it that far. I didn't make it that far. I'll be honest with you. I didn't make it that far at all. We, we crashed. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in the dirt, boys. I'm in the dirt bad. That was a rough crash, too, but my bow, my poor little bow, man. We can only hope that it still works. A bicycle, I think it still works. Moral of the story, kind of hard to, like, ride with one hand and an iPhone in the other. Downhill, 15 miles an hour. Probably not a good idea. Anyways, here we go. We still gotta go hunting. All right guys, I've been up here for three hours, maybe a little bit more, but nothing's came by except for a squirrel a few minutes ago and I've only seen one of those. I'm gonna take this moment to check out my leg and see if it's broken from my bike crash. Whenever I push, Anywhere right here, it kind of like hurts. It's like, it's like a really big spot. But I may be bleeding. I have no idea. I just jumped back on the bike and kept moving. Oh no, it's not that bad. It's just scuffed up pretty good. It'll be a good bruise, but at least I'm not dying, you know? Now on the other hand, my shoulder over here is also feels bruised up a little bit. Dude, from the time I pulled out, it was about 15 seconds before I crashed. I literally crashed in my yard and I was going like 20 miles an hour. It was, it was terrible. Later that evening, I headed back, and I actually seen a few does, which is pretty good because that's more than I've seen pretty much the entire year so far. No buck behind them, so I let them walk. And at this point, it is officially rifle season. Up until this point, it was just bow season, which means you're limited to practically 30 yard shots and you have to use a compound bow. But now since it's rifle season, we have nearly unlimited range. And so day one of rifle season, I head out there. For this evening hunt, I set up in one spot and my cousin's only about a hundred yards away. I sat in my tree for about an hour and a half and then my cousin is actually hunting like maybe a hundred yards that way and he just shot. So that means something happened. He said. he said he got one. He said it's dead. Yeah. It's only four o'clock, too. We're going to it. Forget this hunt. We're going to the kill, boys. We're going to the kill. You know what's crazy? This is my same cousin that last year also killed a buck on opening day 100 yards from me. Bro, what is up with this? He has good luck, man. He has a lot of good luck. And I'm pretty happy about it. I don't need luck. 
yeah, dude. I need to look. I can get. Oh, here he is. He's the dude in the orange. Just in case you're not picking up what I'm putting down. He shot it from right up there at my tree stand I put up last year. That counts as an assist in my book. I'll take it. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. Is he at eight? Nine. Nine? Did he hit a scraper or anything? It was just right here. I think I heard a trout. Really? Wow. Didn't hear me holler at him? No. Oh. I just heard it shoot. I hollered at him. He bowed up. <laughs> I shot him. He's standing. Where was he standing? Oh, no, I shot him. Right there. He was, was he uh, quartering away from you? He's going that way. Was he moving or did you stop? Oh, he's moving. So did he run back here or you drag him? I think so. Huh? Now riddle me this, wouldn't it be so cool if you could have a pocket knife that you every day carry and whenever you need it to, it can be pulled out and even gut a deer with it. Well, that is exactly what the KG pocket knife is available. Kendall Gray want to come slash offer, link in the description. Not gonna lie guys, the KG pocket knife, it's pretty epic. As day two rolled around, I headed out to another spot, sat up and watched this little flat, which is where I got the video of Lincoln a couple weeks earlier. I'm using a SIG cross, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. And this is actually the one I got from the SIG games. Spoiler alert, I didn't see anything. All right guys, I'm inside now. You you can tell I'm inside because there's a cabinet behind me. My goodness, I, and I, can't, I can't feel anything at all. It ain't even that cold, dude. It's only like 25 degrees. I mean, that's cold to me but if you're from like canada it's it's like probably warm or something since it is the second day of rifle season it is sunday so you know about to head to church not necessarily looking like this but this is my fit gun ain't going nowhere hands free deer walks out anyways i'm going to church hashtag jesus we'll go back out there whenever i get back stay tuned <laughs> Update, I'm now back from church. From the intelligence I was able to gather, pretty much everybody is seeing and killing bucks except me. People that are killing bucks are killing them. The people who aren't killing bucks are letting them pass. Pretty much everybody's seeing deer but me, and I'm fine with it, kinda. Back out here with the same Creedmoor. Hoping to get it done with a good 150 grains worth. We have switched up our location slightly. We're kind of watching these woods down here. Thicket out in front of us and a field over here to the left. I guess that's my right. This is where my cousin killed that buck yesterday. So, hey man, I'm just going to try my best. I'm going to try to kill something. A couple hours had passed, but I hear a sound and look up and there's a buck standing right there. But that's not just any buck. That's Sean. That's the same Sean that we've been watching for over two months on trail camera. That's Sean, the seven pointer that I passed up exactly one year ago today. I don't have much time. And with Sean, I have to make a decision fast. Am I gonna shoot him or am I gonna let Sean walk for the second year in a row and continue to grow into a bigger and bigger buck? kidding me boys i think you're kidding me that was sean that was sean i took a weird shot on him i did i took a weird shot on him <laughs> that's so weird oh my gosh that was sean that was sean we're gonna let him do his thing for a little bit i made a weird shot and let me tell you about it all right starting from the top I pulled my gun up way too fast. I knew there was a chance he could run, but at the end of the day, it was a risk I was willing to take. Literally last year, around this same time, I had a buck standing in the same spot and I took two seconds too long and he turned around and ran away. Uh, so I wanted to make it quick. Number two, he trotted through the brush a little bit and uh, I took a shot that I couldn't clearly see the deer. And I could see the silhouette of the deer and I know where to aim on a silhouette. Did my bullet hit a few vines on the way in? Almost most definitely. Is a few small vines enough to stop a 6'5 Creedmoor at 30 yards? I sure hope not. But that's the bet I was willing to take. If everything goes to plan, should have a dead deer. If everything doesn't go to plan, we don't really know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna give him a little bit of time before we walk over there. Hey, we'll see what we can do. All right, I'm looking for blood. Definitely not seeing a big massacre like we're hoping for. I don't really know how to feel about this. I don't like this. 
I'm not seeing much blood. If I don't find him, if I didn't need him, I kind of deserve every bit of that because I've done so many things I shouldn't have done right there. That's what I get, man. I never know. I mean, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, I feel like he should be dead. I do feel like it was a good shot. I don't lie. I mean, it was through a few twigs, but I also feel like he could be right over here dead. So. I tracked him for a good 40, 50 yards. I could see his footprints. I remember where he ran and there just wasn't a single drop of blood. We went ahead and headed on back to the truck. All right, guys, things have changed. Buddy Cody's here. Bleeding pretty good? Yeah. All right, I was like, man, I don't deserve it anyways. I missed it, no blood, nothing. Buddy, we're walking back a different route. It's bleeding a bunch. It's got bubbles in it. So yeah, the deer's dead right now. We just gotta find it. Let's just track the blood trail. We know we went that way. Downhill. Geo, buddy. We found him. We stinking found him. He's dead. Let's go. No way. He's stinking dead. Let's go. There's no way. That's Sean. That's stinking Sean. We've been seeing Sean for months. Oh my goodness. Make sure he's dead. If he's not, hit him with the... <clears throat> he's down. <laughs> Brother's down. Let's investigate a little bit more, guys. I'm really, really interested in where I hit this guy. I didn't know Sean was that big. Dude, I didn't know Sean was that big. Uh, he's not giant, but what? if you're talking about Kendall Gray, this dude's a giant. I ain't this is the biggest deer I've killed. He's a seven? Yeah, yeah seven. Jeez, Sean. Sean, dude, stinking Sean. I can't believe this happened. Sean's not huge, but. Oh, God. <laughs> That's right where I was aiming. I really wasn't looking forward to it. I was gonna have to be like, guys, I mean, it felt like a good shot, but I didn't hit him. But I did hit him, so I'm happy about but it. But the question is, did, and if so, where did it exit? 6.5 may not exit. No. Six, the 6.5 didn't exit. Could have hit the other side's shoulder. Anyways, guys, we're getting this guy packed up. If you guys like this video, click right over here to watch me go bear hunting in Idaho for the first time or right over here for the first buck I ever killed with my bow.